Hey everybody, this is Jared with Second Life Design. Got another video for you today on distressing boards. This is a pretty common technique that I do. Uh, I make a lot of farmhouse tables. That's kind of my bread and butter right now. They're a common thing, they're a common look. Um, there's some TV shows that are really promoting that look and there's some uh, money to be made there if you aren't making farmhouse tables. So this is a three by seven table I'm making. These three boards will make up the top. Uh, they are gonna be kept independent, so there will be they each get mounted individually, and there is about a sixteenth of an, an inch gap in between each one. Um, it's not enough to let anything really fall through, but it's enough to where it adds some visual scale. So it looks kind of like just three big planks are your top. Um, just adds a little bit more scale to it and makes it easier to see. You can see I'm going over all the edges with a quarter inch roundover bit. It just makes everything a little bit more uniform, um, a little bit easier to the touch, no harsh edges, anything like that. Uh, we're not going to be doing a ton of sanding on these, They're, you'll see why in a little bit, but the roundover is just to break all the edges, get any splinters, anything from chipping out, we don't want that. That's the, that would be, that'd be a disaster on oak. Everybody knows it splits really easily, you got to pre-drill it for everything. Um, rounding over the edges really helps uh, mitigate that after the fact. So this way we won't have any problems with anything chipping, tearing anything like that. I really try and make this to where it's gonna last a long time for my clients. They're paying a lot of money for them. I wanna give them a good product. So that's why we're going all the extra effort with the routing, doing all the edges, front, side, back, everything. So we got all three of them together. Going to round over this last one. We'll get started with the sanding. Uh, this, again, this is a three by seven table. Same thing can be applied for small pieces, for coat racks, for coffee tables, anything like that. This does work the best on oak, uh, just by the type of material, and we'll see that and explain that a little bit better in a few minutes, but use it mainly on oak. It will not work so well on softwoods, um, just it does not work with them. Um, there's not, it's all soft, so it doesn't really work. The technique using the wire wheel, like I'm gonna show you, doesn't really work on softwoods. Uh, I'm going over with my sander now. I am hitting this with 100 grit paper. I'm not going too extreme on sanding. It's just gonna be a light touch, again, to get any anything that, any loose edges, any frayed pieces, we're gonna knock those down and secure them. You go, you'll see me uh, wipe my hand along the boards a lot of times. Um, I use my, hear, my ears and my hands to uh, when I'm sanding a lot. The, we can, when something is rough, it's gonna sound a lot different than when it's smooth, when you're sanding. And also I use the feel because I, a lot of times I can't see things the way my hands will feel them. It's, it's hard to describe until you start doing it and it just kind of works better that way. I can feel if I've missed any spots, I'll be able to see that right away or feel that right away. So I'm just sanding all these boards down, getting them all the 100 grit and continuing on with that checking out any imperfections. I really try and lay my hands on every square inch of boards like this, um, trying to do do what the client's going to do uh, eventually. So I'm going to take ahead to finish the work ahead of time before them. So you can see this, you have a worn out four inch cut brush chucked into my angle grinder. That is the distressing technique. So I'm going over the oak boards and that is hogging out any of the softer material. So you'll see the wood grain there's harder and softer material. By going over it like this, it takes away all that soft material and kind of creates peaks and valleys within the boards. It's not enough to where you can, you can hardly see it, but it's enough to where you can feel it for sure. And when, when you apply stain to it, you'll definitely see it. So the stain will, if you were to take a, like for example, a dark walnut stain to these, the dark would stay in the lower spots. And when you wipe it off, no matter how quick you do it, you know, it will leave dark in the lower spots. That's going to give you a really big visual impact that the normal the normal board would not do. Um, it's going to just give it a darker texture, a darker feel, and that's what you're going for. That's what's going to make them look aged and weathered, and they're brand new boards that are structurally sound that will hold a screw all day long, hold a nail, whatever you need to do. So this is a really good technique um, for getting this finish and using new materials. So I'm using it kind of like a buffer on a car. You don't want to stay in any one spot too long. You want to keep the brush flat if possible. This brush is pretty worn out, so it's not um, as aggressive as one that it's new. Um, you'll see me kind of put it up on edge a few times here. That's to really get more pressure and take more material out. Some spots are tougher than others. 
I'm going back across it again. Um, it's more, this is kind of to even it out. And you can almost see it compared to the board I'm working on ver versus the next one. Um, the one I'm working on is a little bit shinier where it's actually kind of burnishing the harder material that's staying there. So it's kind of taking away the soft material and it's also finishing this material that's staying there. So it's kind of double acting in that sense. Um, it's not, if there's any swirl marks from sanding or anything, those will generally get taken out. But if you're giving it a really close inspection, you may see one here or there. But this is, this is the technique I use for distressing. Most of the time, uh, it's not as fine work as a, if, you know, fine cabinetry or anything like that. So this is just a quick, pro, um, quick process to get a finished material. Here, we're trying to get a close up of this. Just kind of bear with it. You'll see uh, it's taking away all that soft material. It gives you that texture. So when you rub your hand across this, you're gonna feel high spots and low spots. It's gonna feel really weathered and worn. That's what you're going for. That is the look. That's what people will love. You can kind of see it right here. There's the shiny spots and the dull spots. The dull spots are lower. That's the softer material that got taken away by the wire brush. The brighter spots, the shiny spots, are the harder material that's gonna stay. That is where the stain will get wiped off and won't be as dark. The lower spots are where it's gonna be darker. So that's, that's basically it. There, it's a really quick uh, process. Again, this is for a table. You could do this for a coffee table, coat rack, whatever. Uh, this is the finished product. You can see the stain really makes it kind of has more of a wow factor than it normally would. That is what I'm going for. This is the finished table. Uh, I'm at a nice base for it, distressed finish on the base as well. And it's a really nice product. The client was really happy. They're looking forward to some other pieces. So that's always a win. That's, that's the goal guys. Um, any other questions, let me know. Uh, follow my Instagram at Second Life Design and have a good day.